So how do you make your live streams generate more revenue and more fans? In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you three ways to do that, and it's gonna optimize your live stream so that they can be the most efficient they can possibly be. Let's jump in. Now, some of you guys remember from a video I've done recently where I broke down how I got $14,211.73 from my gigs out there touring in the United States, and the strategies that I implemented to help get that. So what I wanted to do is I had a great question um, from one of our viewers was, how do I implement this in a live stream? And so what I wanted to do is give you the same strategies that I use to generate you know, five figures in merch revenue. How are we gonna do that in a live stream context? So let's break this down step by step. If you remember the first step, is you have to be engaging in your performance. But here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna test something out in this video that I've never done before. So what I'm gonna be doing is showing you a process of how to be persuasive and command an audience. And I'm gonna be giving you the step-by-step -step breakdown. I've never shared this with anybody, and I'm gonna be sharing it with you right now. So what you wanna do is go through this. You wanna calculate a flow. This flow is essential because it's going to have a sort of pacing effect for you and your audience. You have to think about this in the context of when you are speaking on stage or you're speaking in a live stream, you are selling one to many, which means you are going to need to set them up, handle the objections, and then close the sales at the end of the live stream. But here's the thing, we're not gonna do this in a very overt way. We're gonna make it flow naturally, and there's gonna be a way to do it that's very you know, subtle and not very pushy, and which is a, what a lot of people wanna avoid. When they think, oh, you know, uh, I don't wanna be very salesy about it. What they're talking about is they don't wanna to try to, uh, really hard to convince somebody, right? They, they don't wanna try really hard to convince somebody of something they potentially don't wanna buy. That's not what I'm suggesting we do here. What I'm suggesting we do is uncover the offer in such a way that helps them make a decision of either yes, I want that, or no, I don't want that. So here's the step-by-step -step process. Number one, you have to grab attention, okay? How do you grab attention? Well, in any live performance context, it doesn't matter if it's through the internet or in person, you have to have a killer intro and a killer first song. So the first song that you play is gonna be crucial because here's what you may be thinking. Well, the first song is not that big of a deal because a majority of the live stream viewers are gonna start watching you know, midway through the performance and so the first song isn't that important. I would argue the opposite. Why? Because a majority of the people, hopefully, they're gonna watch your live stream don't watch it when it was filmed. They're gonna watch it when it was pre-recorded and saved and up on your YouTube or on your Twitch or wherever, and they're gonna go watch the recording, a lot of them, if you offer that. And I think that's what you should do because what's gonna happen is they're gonna click and then they're gonna watch your performance in a sequence that you've designed to be the most impactful possible. So yeah, some people may be stepping in the middle of your set quote unquote, as it's happening on live stream, that's okay. You're still gonna go through this process seamlessly step by step because that's gonna ensure that the people that watch it from the beginning have an optimized performance and experience. So the first song is absolutely essential because that's what's gonna get those people who I was just talking about to actually watch the rest of it and be like, ooh, this is, this is really good. Let me see what's going on with the rest of this. If you can have a killer first song that has a really great intro, that is the place to do it, right there in your live stream. Now, number two, you wanna build curiosity. Um, if you have time, you can make a promise, but I think in a lot of times for musician, curiosity is the way to go. Curiosity be, would be something like, yeah, man, I've been working on something really cool. I don't know if I'll talk about it later. You know, it's, I don't know if it's ready yet. It's kind of secret. Um, okay, so this next song, you know, you know, you can kind of just like, whoa, 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 what's he talking about? What's that? What is that? I want to know what that is. That's just one way of building it. So you need to be thinking to yourself, how can I build curiosity? If I was in a live performance, you know, I may walk over to the mic while my singer is getting a drink of water and I go, should we tell them? <laughs> should we tell them about it? And he's like, no, no, not yet. No, 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 don't tell them. Don't tell them. And then we just moved on to the next song. People would be like, 
wh what? You can't just leave me with a cliffhanger like that. I'm curious now. And then you may have people throughout the set, this is what you would hope, in the comments section of your live stream that are going, what was that? What was it? Tell us what that was. And then in, after you play a song, or maybe two, you build desire. And you want to like kind of gauge it by the comments. If there's no comments about it, then you're going to have to engage it yourself. But if there are some comments of people going, what was that thing? Tell us about the thing. You want to let that build up. And if it can build up after a song or two, then you can go, okay, hey, so I've got this new kind of exclusive you know, uh, merch thing I'm putting together, you know, it's still like, it's kind of top secret though, you know, like I, I can't tell you very much more about it potentially, but um, you know, let's play some more songs, you know, blah, 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 blah. And maybe in that section, if you want to go detailed, you can. If you want to start going, yeah, we've got this cool merch offer where it's, you know, you get a hoodie and a t-shirt and a free wristband and CD or free this and that, and you have a cool little bundle much like what in my previous video I had a bundle called the extra crispy combo something like that with a fun name can be a great way to uh, to increase the, the um, perceived value and to also get people like whoa what is that I want to wait you I, I kind of zoned out when you were talking about that what was that again you know there's gonna be people that do that because they may think oh he's talking about his merch I don't I don't care about that but they hear extra crispy combo and they're like wait what you know, so a name that has that sort of pattern interrupt can be a good advantage whenever you're doing that. So after you unveil a little bit more about what the offer is, you wanna go into more songs, right? Now at this point, we haven't really given a way for people to go anywhere yet. Now, we'll talk about this as, we, as it goes on. So you play some more songs, just play like three, you know, get a good chunk of the middle of your set, you know, or towards the middle, back half of your set done. And then you're gonna start handling objections. You're gonna start going, yeah, you know, this, uh, I think we're gonna open up this offer. I think it's cool. I think you guys have been really cool. I think we're ready to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this offer up and we're going to give you this opportunity to, to uh, you know, support here and here and here. And if you, and this is where you address objections, right? So here, this is where you're gonna start to say, you know, if you're thinking, Dax, I don't have the time. This is like a quick process. It only takes a couple minutes. And, you know, it's very cheap compared to like, we look at this and it costs this and this and this and the value of that is this, but I'm not gonna charge you all that. I'm gonna charge you this cool little bundled price. So, you know, it's definitely worth it. Check it out if you guys wanna do it. Go ahead, here's the button. This is when you unveil whatever it is that you're gonna unveil. Now, what are those things? You can do a link in the comments that you're unveiling and you can pin that comment to the top of the chat so that from that point, that link is gonna be there for people to go open up in a new tab and start getting the offer. And from that point, we're okay, we're letting the sales hopefully come in as we're playing another song or two. Then if you have any, this is an optional step because not everybody has this and sometimes the context and the situation um, isn't right for certain artists and I understand. But if you have any testimonials of people, um, facts about yourself or stats that kind of, you know, back up how cool this thing is, um, for instance, if you're ever doing a fan club offer, I really like offers that get people into people's Patreon, and that's that's a fan club, you know, to me, that's what I call those things. Uh, but any kind of membership site that is a monthly fee, I'm really excited about doing that kind of stuff because you can get people in there, ask them, what do you think about this? We created all this stuff for you, what do you think? And they're gonna be like, this stuff is awesome. And then you can say like, yeah, here's a little, um, testimonial from one of the people that just joined our fan club. It says, hey, blah, 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 blah. This is so amazing. I love it. Angie from South Carolina. So yeah, guys, pick up yours today. I've got a couple more songs. You know, and this is when we're going to start going into two things. You can do a killer guarantee right there, or you can go into a song and do the guarantee after. But either way, the guarantee needs to be something like, yeah, listen, guys, go check it out. And if you don't like it, and if within like a month, I'll give you your money back. It's okay. Like no big deal. And then you can just keep the shirt. I don't even care. Whoa, I can get my money back and I don't have to return the item? Oh, you th may think, oh, some people may abuse that, Dax. It's like most people will not. Most people will not abuse that system. Some people may abuse systems, but if these are your fans who actually like you, 
They're not going to abuse that. And uh, so you can create a, a killer guarantee. This is a way of putting it to where there's no risk for them to just say, hey, go check it out. Even if you don't end up buying it, there's no risk because I'll give you your money back. Or you could do one of those things, what's called, um, it's, it's like a different positioning of price. So the offer is slightly different. So you're going, hey, what do, what, if you buy this right now, you put in your credit card information, I won't bill you for two weeks. And if in the two weeks, you get your stuff and you're like, I, this sucks. I just won't bill you and you can keep it. Right, but if in within two weeks, you know, I'll I'll bill your card for the amount total, right? So people are like, oh, whoa! So this is kind of like a low risk offer. Like I put my credit card information, it comes, it shows up, and if I don't, you know, if I don't say anything within two weeks, boom, my credit card's processed, and you, there you got your merch. Very cool. No refunds after that, but that's your killer guarantee offer, right? Um, so you can create that either before um, the second to last song or after. The second to last song. Then we're getting to we play. We're, we're in a position where it's going to be like play a song. We're going to do a call to action, and then play our final song. That's kind of the position we want to be in, where we're playing the. Um, we're, we play a song that was like risk reversal. Play the song. Call to action. This is like all right, guys. Usually this is where in a show you go, our merch table is over there. Go check it out. Go see us after the show, right? Say the same kind of thing. Say, hey, our link is in the comment section. Go click the link that's in the comment section. Say it with the same enthusiasm that you would say it if you were on stage in front of 500 or 1,000 people, okay? You need to say it with the same kind of enthusiasm. Like, thank you guys so much for being here. You guys are so amazing. So click the link that's in the, you know, the comment section or click the link that's in the description. If this is like a YouTube thing. Um, do that. This is our last song. This is my last song. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's called blah, 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 blah. And you play one of your best, your biggest song, your most recognizable song. You play that thing right there. Maybe it's a fan favorite. You play that thing right there at the very end. And then after that last song is over and you've put on a killer performance, what you're going to do is say, thank you guys so much. Click the link in the description, or click you know, click the link in the description. Click uh, click the link that's in the comments section. We're gonna leave this up for five minutes, and then we're taking it down. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you guys on another live stream. Boom, and then you can walk off, and then for five minutes you can leave that live stream up. Um, maybe you put like a like let's say you were on a stool or something. You could have like a little whiteboard or something that says thank you so much for watching. Click the link that's in the comment section, and then after five minutes you cut the feed. And what we're trying to do there is create urgency and scarcity in an authentic real-time situation. So they're like, the only link that's available anywhere on the internet to get this offer is in the comment section. It's in the description, okay? And this is going away once the live stream is over. Now for a lot of platforms like um, Instagram, TikTok, that is the case. Um, for Facebook, you can choose whether you want to post it or whether you want to take the live stream down afterwards. I would take the live stream down or download it before you take it down. So download it so you have that as an asset and then go take it down. And so that way it legitimately is a real-time scarcity offer. Now throughout that set at some point, we're going to move on to strategy number two. So you've got the flow. I know that was a really detailed, I told you guys, this is the first time that I was unveiling this strategy. I was going to go deep and describe this stuff for you guys. So these other ones are not going to be as long. Number two, the email pitch. I talked about the email pitch in the previous video because it's an essential part to get their contact information so that not only do they buy the offer that you're talking about at the merch table, aka your live stream, but you're able to contact them about future offers and get future revenue from your fans because they're willing to support you. So. What is the different modified thing that you have to do? Well, throughout at some point in the uh, flow that we've outlined here, you want to ask some questions like, how many of you have seen my live streams before? Comment in the chat, I want to see how many people have seen the live streams before. And then if there's some people there are like, awesome, awesome, how many of you have never seen these live streams before. Let me see you guys in the comments. 
And then what you're gonna ask is, are you guys enjoying the live stream? Yes, yes, let me see in the comments. Yes, I'm enjoying it, yes, I love it. Then you go into the email pitch and you say, well, if you wanna catch the next time I'm doing one of these, I only announce them and get people ready for them on my email list. So make sure to click another, this, I'm gonna put this comment in here, guys. I'm gonna pin it for a second before the next song. Click here, go join the email list, and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you play a song with that in the comment section and then you take it down. And then when we do the offer, we're gonna drop the offer link. So you need to have these links prepared ahead of time, by the way, if that isn't obvious. You need to get those kind of links prepared, set aside so that you can just real time, take them from a notes and just boom, 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 knock them out. Um, and then yeah, here's what I would recommend when you're scheduling your live streams too. Be scheduled, but random. What does that mean? <laughs> it sounds like that's a paradox. What I mean is, you wanna, I'll just give an example. Let's say you wanna do them weekly, okay? Very cool. Maybe they're Fridays or Saturdays. You don't know which one until you're on the email list and I'm telling you a couple days before, hey, it's gonna be on Friday, make sure to check it out on Friday, blah, 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 blah. And that gets you in a situation where you can leverage that to get people into the email list. But it's also one of those things where you don't want people to get in this predictable kind of mindset about your live streams like this that have the desire to sell more merchandise and an offer that you have going on. You don't want people to, like if you're saying, this offer's only gonna last for a certain period of time, and then you're back the next week with the same offer, doing the same pitch, doing the same thing. Doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, maybe do them once a month. But when you do them, don't do them the same, like maybe it's the last week of the month, but maybe one week or one month it's Friday and then the next month you do it the last week it's Saturday and then the next time you do it's the last week but Thursday. Keep them guessing so that it's like, oh, I actually have to be in the email list to know. I'm not just gonna be able to be like, yeah, I know when it's gonna be. I don't have to subscribe to your list. I know when it's gonna be. No, you don't because I'm gonna switch it up on you. <laughs> so that's one of those things that you can do to help get more people to get into the email list because there's an actual reason and incentive for them to do so. All right, number three, the upsell process. So you have a link that you put in the comment section and we're talking about this during the performance. Go click the link, click the link, click the link. They click on it. What happens then, Dax? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you. There's two approaches that you can do to have this upsell process, like I mentioned in the video where I made you know, five figures on the road doing this kind of stuff. You wanna create an upsell. So what you're gonna do is have, like I said, two strategies. One, you have a landing page that sells the offer. And then whenever they're like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. Maybe it's a Stripe checkout link, who knows? They go from there to another page that is an upsell page. And what you can position from there is, hey, real quick, would you like to get what you just purchased for free because I'll take it out of what I would normally charge for a shirt? You might wanna phrase it a little bit better than that, but that's fundamentally what you're doing. You're saying, well, I normally charge 30 for a shirt. That's our normal rate for a shirt. But you just paid $5 for a CD or a whatever it was. I'm just using that as a <laughs> blanket example. I'm gonna take that $5 you just paid out of this so that basically all you're doing is paying for the shirt for 25 bucks and the CD is basically free. Oh, well that's really cool, I like that. So, because honestly if you add the total, <laughs> it's like five plus 25, that's 30. So they are paying 30 still. <laughs> or you could go, the other route, which is have it all on one page, which is you're gonna have to have a landing page. You can't really do a Stripe uh, checkout link this way. You have to actually have a landing page software or something that will allow this, like Elite 360 or uh, ClickFunnels or something like that, where you can go, you have the page that's selling the offer, and then in the checkout, there's a little button they can click to just like, boom, add it to their order, which is called an order bump, right? So you're selling the thing for $5. Hey, if you get this, you get that free. <laughs> Why won't you just get that? So, oh, okay, I'll get the shirt, higher value item, because I'm basically getting a deal that makes my CD, low ticket item, free. 
Again, insert your own low ticket items and your own mid ticket items, something like a shirt and a CD, but it could also be um, a wristband and a hoodie. It could be all these different kind of variations, right? So those two little strategies walk people through a funnel fundamentally, where at the very end of that, there's a thank you page hopefully that says, thank you so much for doing this. And maybe from there, you can do what's called the Amazon upsell. This is where you, first off, you're like, hey, order's confirmed, all your stuff is good, here's all the stuff that you got in your offer. Maybe you had some free downloadables that come with the offer to make it more enticing. They access those things there. Then it's like step two. I've got a cool special offer for you. Boom, go into one of your membership sites, one of your fan club, your Patreon, whatever you wanna do there. So that way, the people who have gone through this funnel process, whether they got the order bump or not, or whether they took the upsell or not, they're here on this page and there's still an opportunity to get them into the membership site. So you look at it, worst case scenario, somebody pays low ticket item all the way through. Hey, that's still good. Someone paid for like a low ticket $5, $7, $10 item. Or mid case scenario, a couple of those people buy the order bump as well, right? So not only do you have sales that are... <laughs> oh my gosh, my son just hit my door and scared the life out of me, that's hilarious. But you can also get to a position where when you're selling, God, he just threw me off so bad, that's so funny. <laughs> that tells you, you're just never ready for kids, man. They always just sneak up on you and get you. Um, but Or mid-case scenario, people buy this upsell or this order bump. Okay, so now we're generating more revenue because we've actually got, oh, some more people that are buying higher ticket things. And then also in mid-case scenario, nobody buys the upsell, but a couple people sign up to the membership site. Well, that's pretty good, right? Still advantageous because now we're getting monthly revenue. And then best case scenario, you have someone who is a straight up super hyper fan and they're like, not only do I want this low ticket item, but I want your upsell and yes, I want your membership. And then you win threefold. And so do they because they get all these awesome perks, right? So hopefully that is a strategy that for your next live streams you can utilize so that you can generate more revenue, you can get more fans and build that sort of lasting relationship with them. So let's just kind of recap. You put on a killer performance where you utilized all these amazing strategies to get you to engage them. And not only that, you got them to give you your email because you threw an email pitch throughout that. And then you pitch your offer, which if they take the offer, they're actually people who want to support you financially. There's an opportunity for them to upsell and increase the average cart value of those orders and potentially get some membership or what they call continuity income coming into your, uh, to, your gener um, to your income. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a lot. What I do with a lot of my clients is I help them set up ways to generate fans by getting content that attracts their ideal fans and then we build an email list, get them into the email list, and show them how to monetize their fan base. So if that's something that's interesting to you, go ahead and click the comments, or excuse me, click the link that's in the description, and you can apply to work with me. There's a call we can do. It's a total free strategy call where we help kind of give you a roadmap of your music business. So if you'd like to hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with me for free, click the link that's in the description, and I look forward to hearing you and helping you with your music business. Otherwise, hit the subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you on another episode of Musicians Ignite. Thank <laughs> you.